you know, obviously a lot went right for you guys yesterday. Um, but the, in the first half, after the, the strong start, the two touchdowns, the offense struggled a little bit. Some of the accuracy numbers for Josh, you know, in the first two weeks have been down. What do you attribute to that to, to maybe like the inconsistency so far to the effectiveness of the offense? Well, I'd say you're not going to score on every drive. We'd like to. Um, a tough league. Um, we got a lot of good players on defense, good coaches. Uh, you do the best you can on each drive. Um, you know, sometimes one thing stalls a drive. Um, in terms of the numbers, I'm not, you know, really concerned about that. There's, you know, I'm concerned about the decision making right now and, you know, when we're throwing it away, making good decisions under stress. And he's done a good job with that. Thanks. Hey, Brian, Adam Benini. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, kind of following up on that a little bit. You know, it, Josh brought that right up in the post game. you know, and it was kind of a, a discussion point during the game. He used the words that he's struggling to get into a rhythm. And obviously, a lot of this is a better question for him. But as the offensive coordinator and a guy that works with him as closely mm -hmm. as you do, what do you take from that? And, and how do you try and maybe diagnose that and fix it within game? Yeah, I, I think that, number one, I got a lot of confidence in Josh. He's, uh, he's his harshest critic. Um, you know, it's not really different than anything we do week to week. We try to not ride a roller coaster. Uh, we try to be as consistent as we can in terms of the corrections that we need to make um, as an offensive unit. And whether it's scheme, whether it's plays, whether it's throws, whether it's runs, whether it's blocks. Um, you know, we kind of try to keep a level head and again, this, this league is a tough league. Um, it's a week to week league. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that's, that's what makes him a really good football player. And he's so competitive and, and hard on himself. Um, you know, and he's fun to coach. Secondly, was it a concerted effort to have more balance in terms of the offensive attack in that game yesterday? Yeah. You know, you know, Adam, we try to do things each week that we think gives us a, gives us a chance and, um, you know, obviously that was, that was part of the plan, uh, yesterday, as you saw, um, relative to numbers and things like that. Um, you know, I thought there was a lot of good things, you know, it's hard to score 35 points in the national football league. Um, but there's certainly a lot of things that we all can do better, um, that we want to do better. Look, we again, our goal is to try to score on every drive. So, you know, when you get to a point when you feel like that and you're disappointed that you didn't punch it in or get any points. Um, I think that's a, that's a healthy thing because there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of guys in the room that, you know, we have a standard. Uh, we try to play and coach that standard, uh, regardless of the score, regardless of the situation, whatever that may be. Um, and I think that's a credit to the guys we have in the room. Thanks, Brian. You got it. Hey, Brian, uh, when, when looking at hey, John. snap numbers, uh, one that really jumped is Dawson Knox. I think it was yeah. the most snaps he's, he's ever played in the game. How much of that was game plan specific and how much of it is you'd just like to get him more involved and, and out there? Um, I think a lot of it is, is game plan specific. We have a lot of confidence in, in Dawson. He's played a lot of, of plays for us yesterday. Um, you know, we had, a, I'd say, a variety of personnel groups, <clears throat> probably a little bit more than we've had in the past going into that game. Um, and most of them involved a tight end for that game. So, um, you know, he's our, he's our tight end that we look to, um, you know, so therefore he got, he got a lot of reps. And I asked Sean about Cody Ford, no rotation yep. this week. And, and he mentioned, he believes he's starting to see the mentality and attitude that was evident when he was playing at Oklahoma. Do you sense you're, you're seeing a, a different version of him than maybe you had in previous years? Well, I think he's, he's, you know, he's kind of always had that attitude, if you will, um, that's ingrained in him and probably his upbringing and, um, you know, his mindset. I think that, you know, the consistency, again, he's coming back from some injuries. Um, he's, I've said this before, he's had a good camp and, you know, the only way to get better is to play um, and go through some of the things that you have to go through as a younger player or a player that hasn't played maybe as much with some injuries and things like that. Um, so, you know, he, he's done a, he's done a nice job for us. I think he's got, you know, the, as we all do a whole improvement mindset, um, but he's, he's improving each week and that's what you look for in, in your guys. Appreciate it, Dave. You got it. 
Hey, Brian. Um, I was curious, you know, Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, Josh and a couple of the guys had mentioned yesterday that some last minute stuff was added in Saturday to the game plan. Is that normal or, you know, what was the, why did that happen? Yeah, I think, look, our job is, is a coach and staff is to prepare all the way up. And then throughout the game, it's, it's not like it's, um, you know, things we, we don't, you know, know how to do or anything like that. Maybe it's a, a tweak of a blocking pattern or a new code word, or, you know, maybe it's a, a play that someone saw studying at night. Sometimes it's from the players that are watching tape and sometimes it's from the coaches. And I think one of the, the good things as you, you get involved in a program and you're, you know, on your third or your fourth year with people that, that you work with and have some continuity, I think that's some of the, the good things you can do, you know, in year one, not as much, you know, in year four, if, you know, a zone scheme is better than a man scheme, or we think we need to change a code word, whatever it may be. Um, you know, that's really no different to me than changing, you know, we've changed plays in the first quarter. We changed plays in the third quarter. We changed plays in the fourth quarter. Um, we just try to do anything we can do to, to try to give our guys the best chance. And then I was curious going back to Zach Moss as much as you did yesterday after the fumble and, you know, keeping yeah. out there in those situations, especially after he was an active last week for you, what kind of confidence do you have in him and why did you want to give him those opportunities? Well, I have confidence in all our guys. Um, again, this is, this is not a game where it's mistake free game, whether you're coaching or playing, you're going to go through some obstacles. Um, could be physically, could be mentally, or could be a play call, whatever it may be. Um, and you have to be able to bounce back and you have to show belief in your players that, that they're going to bounce back. I mean, if, you know, you pulled everybody because they made a mistake, you wouldn't really have anybody. I mean, I don't think that's healthy anyways for the psyche of a team or a player. Um, showing confidence, showing trust, showing that you have the guys back, I think is important. Um, for any player, because I think that gives them confidence. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we all have jobs to do. Um, and they're not always going to be perfect. You're, you're going to wish you had some plays back most every game, whether you win, you know, whatever the score is or whether you lose. Um, I think having a, a healthy respect for an individual and what they're trying to accomplish is always important because, um, you know, lack of confidence in a player that, that could go south really quick. Um, and the guys that we have on our football team, uh, you know, I think we all, and I know I can speak for myself, have confidence in, in all the guys and, and all the coaches. Um, and you got to have some mental toughness about yourself. You're going to go through things during a year where it's not going to be perfect. Um, a drop ball, a call, a fumble, a throw, a missed block. I mean, those are always going to happen. Um, I think the, the mark of a leader is to, to weather the storm, uh, to show you have confidence in those, in those players and in those coaches, um, and then go out there and go back to work. Is it kind of cool to see him take advantage of those opportunities, you know, once, you know, he took yeah. advantage of that though? Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think, look, when you, when you show confidence in players and they go out there and they perform, you have such a deep admiration for what these guys do. Um, they work hard. They bust their tails, all of them. Uh, they put it on the line each and every week. Um, you know, you see them out here practicing and, and fighting through some nicks and bruises, and it's early in the game, but in the training room or iced up on a plane because they're cramping. I mean, you had the, the level of respect you have for these guys, um, I think is important because they, they do. That's, it takes a toll on these guys. Um, and then when you go out and you watch them have some success that ultimately contributes to the team's success, that's really what you're happy for. Thanks. Yep, you got it. Hey, Dave's just wanted to know what going hey, up Maddie. against. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Good. Uh, just wanted to know what going up against a tough defensive line in the Steelers week one, how it helps you prepare for another tough defensive line that you're going to see on Sunday in the Washington football team being loaded with first round picks up front. Sure, I think that's a thoughtful question. Um, you know, we got we got to dive in just kind of started on these guys and I have some familiarity with some of them. Um, there's a bunch of SEC guys on that, on that roster, two from Alabama that I know and, and one from Mississippi state. So like they're, um, and then obviously the, the first rounder from Ohio state, um, look, they, they don't, they're first rounders for a reason. Um, they're big, they're strong, they're athletic, they can move. 
Um, obviously, it'll be a challenge. It always is when you're playing a really good defensive line. That's that's where it starts. And, um, you know, we'll have our work cut out for us. Thanks. You got it. Coach Dable, Mookie Hawkins, Wolf of Sports and Eddie. How's it going, sir? Hey, Mook, how are you? I'm going good, Coach. Um, good. Last last week, one for four in the red zone. This week, four for four in the red yeah. zone. Was that a point of emphasis going into this week, making sure that you were dead on inside the red? Yeah. I mean, look, that's where most of these games, um, you know, where it's won and losses, is finishing with seven points. Um, the field condenses. Uh, there's tighter coverage. The windows are smaller. Um, and one play can make a huge difference in a game. Um, in this case, I thought that that our guys were, <clears throat> you know, were really focused. They, and they were focused the week before. We just – we didn't get the job done and, you know, going four for four is, is obviously was a huge thing in, in this game. Absolutely. Coach. And um, two, two, two players to, you know, mention Dawson Knox and Devil Singletary and, you know, first play out the gate, man, for them to execute that split zone, those two with Dawson coming across and, yeah. and Devin was able to press it and hit it, man. How excited were you for, for that play to be well executed and also Dawson Knox coming up with that big touchdown catch in the back in the end zone. Yeah, again, much like the, the Zach Moss deal, um, two players that we've had in the program since we drafted them, I think they've gotten better each year. Um, they've weathered some ups and some downs, um, but they have the right mindset um, that we covet here. Uh, have a lot of confidence in those guys. And look, it was well blocked on that second play, but let's not forget about Emmanuel Sanders block to really spring them. Um, you know, those, those perimeter blocks on the edge are, are really important. <clears throat> and, you know, there was a, a blitzing guy off the edge that Steph just got enough of to hold him up for a second. And, and Emmanuel, you know, went off and finished it on that on a defensive back, which was uh, which was key. You know, there's again, we, we probably ran the ball a little bit more than, than we've run it here in the past. Um, and it was a total team effort with uh, with those guys on the perimeter as well. Hey, man, we all go out there and get it done. Good luck this week against those four Aaron Donalds. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Luke. <laughs> Hey, Brian, Mike, Catalano. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, good. good. Um, Sean always says, you know, do your 111th. Um, mm -hmm. But in reality, we, you know, the quarterback has a lot on his plate. You, know, you yeah. pay him a lot of money. That's what he's there for. And you also, you say, you know, Josh is his harshest critic. Yeah. Were there moments, like you scored 35, the team won. I get that. But it's a lot's on Josh. Are there moments you got to go? Back to the buildup time with him, you know, you, you build up a great into a, he's a great player now and there's so much on him and so much is expected of him. And is him being his harshest critic always a good thing? Um, yeah, I think it's the competitor inside of him. You know, he was, we were just talking for a while upstairs. Um, and, you know, he's got that, I'm not going to say despondent look, but he's just kind of now he's like, I should have done this, this and this. And I said, yeah, I you know, look, we can always do better, all of us. We can always do better, I said. But look at – there's so many little things that maybe um, outside of really understanding and, and, and knowing what we're doing, some of the things that he did really, really um, – he really did a good job in those. Um, you know, obviously, he wants to complete every pass. And, you know, I said, look, I don't care how many throwaways you have. If you got to throw the football away and that's the best decision, then that's the best decision. Um, so, uh, again, I don't mind him being his, his harshest critic. Um, he wants to be, he wants to be so good. I think that's what, that's what helped him to improve each and every year. Um, and that's a great thing to have too, because, uh, again, this league is a tough league. There's tough opponents, there's tough coaching staffs, there's tough schemes to go against. Um, and you're not going to be perfect every week. You know, there's going to be some, there's going to be some downs. There's going to be some, some hiccups and some, you know, you know it's not going to be always great. Um, I think it's important not to ride a roller coaster. And I think he's, you know, in the year that he's in, um, you know, fourth year and, and, you know, he's done a lot of good things. I think he, you know, that mindset is, is really important because um, you can get down real quick in his business as, as much as you can get up. And I think um, the good players, the good coaches that I've learned from and been around and, and players are, are as consistent as they can be. Um, and he is, he's that he's always, whether we win or whether we lose, it's not the, you know, 55 plays or 60 plays that he did the exact right way. It's 
the six plays or the five plays that he wishes he had back. And I think if you're a competitor, um, that's the way it should be, you know, whether it's a coach, whether it's a player, um, you know, look, we, 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 we're supposed to do it right. That's our job. It's not always going to happen that way. So can you be mentally strong enough and tough enough um, to whether handle the coaching, handle the criticism, however, whatever it may be, to keep on moving forward with the improvement mindset? And that's, that's him to a T. Great. Thank you. I appreciate you, it. You got it. Hey, Brian, uh, Ben Standick with The Athletic. Um, you hey, mentioned, hey, uh, you mentioned some of those defensive linemen with Washington that, you, that you're that you familiar with, uh, Jerron Payne yep. and John Allen. I guess what could you tell us about your time together with them, seeing them develop there, and then how, they've, how you've seen them progress in the NFL? Yeah, I wasn't there with Jonathan. Um, just have you know heard the stories around there, what an impressive young man he is in person. And obviously, you put on the tape he is. I was there with Painter. He had a He's got good hands. He thought a nice goal line touchdown pass against Clemson. So uh, good, good young man. Um, two really good players, um, you know, know the game of football really well. Um, just hold them in high regard. And again, not being around Jonathan uh, when I was there, just hearing the, the people in the building talk about him as, as a person too, not just a player, uh, um, high respect to, to him. Um, and sort of as a, Separate question. You obviously, you guys have developed Josh Allen into the player that he is. He played a lot as a rookie. I'm just curious your thoughts as to the idea of bringing in rookie quarterbacks. I know every situation can be unique depending on the player and the sure. situation, but the idea of playing a rookie quarterback pretty quickly, getting them thrown in, or is it better perhaps to wait and, and develop them on, on the side? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, Ben. I think that, that I mean, it just depends. It varies from team to team. The situation you're in, I couldn't tell you the situation that, I mean, I know the situation that, that we were in when Josh started playing, um, you know, it takes, you know, I always say it takes a village, you know, kind of like, kind of like raising your, your children um, with a quarterback, because it's a, it's a very difficult position to play. Um, there's a lot that goes into it in terms of not just on the field, the instruction of defenses, the instructions of offensive scheme, vocabulary, all those type of things. But it's also taxing outside, um, outside the bill. You know, quarterbacks get a fair share of credit. They also get the fair share of blame. And there's just so many people that are involved in helping develop that position, particularly when you draft one in the first round. Um, thoughts, habits, priorities, scheme, uh, taking care of your body, how to deal with, you know, the people in the community. Um, there's just so many, there's so many layers to it, Ben. So I think each situation is, is probably a little bit different. Um, you know, we handled it the, the way we handled it. Um, uh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of people and it starts with the player. Let's not, let's, let's not forget that, you know, the, the way the player was raised, his upbringing, his intangibles, his commitment to doing the things that he needs to do to try to be successful. Um, his intelligence, I'd say both on and off the field, but his understanding of the game, there's, there's just, it's a wide variety. It takes a, it takes a long time. And you're most likely you're going to go through some bumps, right? So being able to, to handle that in terms of the psychology aspect of it, of being a young quarterback in this league is, is, is really critical as well. Um, and there's a lot of people that, that are here to, to help Josh, um, the consistency of the relationships in the building, you know, you, you go through, you know, some some young quarterbacks go through four different coordinators in four different years or whatever it may be, and are on to the next. It's it's uh, you know, it's it takes a village. Thank you. You got it. Hi, Brian. Uh, Andrew Golden from the Washington Post. Hey, Andrew. Uh, how are you? Good. How you doing? Good. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, Josh's uh, Josh Allen's ability to run the football. People people talk a lot about his arm. How important is him running the football to your game plan? What you guys do as an offense? Yeah, I think Andrew. That's that. That varies from game to game. Um, you know, some are design runs, um, some are zone read runs, some are just quarterback loose play scrambles <clears throat> where he sees some openings where he can step up and make some yards with his feet. Um, you know, sometimes we have more in a game plan. Um, it just depends on, you know, what we're seeing defensively and what we think would, would work for us. But obviously he's a guy that, you know, the whole dual threat quarterback, you know, coming out and just five stars and four stars that are either dual threats or pocket passers. Uh, you know, nowadays you're seeing more and more people 
uh, move and run with the quarterback, um, you know, just evens up the numbers at times. And at the same time, you, you try to be smart with it.